officially. So just want to let everybody know that this session is being recorded. Welcome to this evening's uh, uh, the Seniors Network Mastermind, and the floor is yours, Heather. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As Donald said, we are the Seniors Network Group. We are here helping all realtors work the 55 plus communities. And today we're gonna learn about designations. First of all, we have a lot of designations. I went on the website. I know that when I first started, it was about this long with designations. I don't know how many you know, designations there were when everybody else started, but it's grown exponentially. Um, so we are here to hone in on what designations are going to help us in the 55 plus communities um, and being able to market to the 55 plus um, demographics. Um, while we're going through this, um, we're going to take a poll uh, something that, you know, would be interesting of how many of us here are SRES certified. If you don't know what that means, <laughs> it's seniors real estate. Um, it's a seniors real estate designation. Go ahead and drop. I think Donald's going to go ahead and do a uh, poll for you. And then, are you there, Donald? Yep. Okay, <laughs> Donald's gonna get a poll going there. But I would also like to introduce Debbie Gentry. Debbie Gentry, welcome to our group and helping us. She's also one of our board members and she has a lot of designations, ones that can help us succeed and are helping her. Debbie, can you talk to us about the senior market designations and what's going, what works and what's not working with the designations. Yep, we can do that. So I'm going to approach it by what I think is important for real estate in general, and then highlight what I think is important from a 55 plus if you're going to tackle that world um, exclusively. So uh, Heather or Donald's gonna throw some links into the chat as we go. I hope you can throw them all together. That way you can see them all together, but I'm gonna have them on the screen. Uh, but um, when we talk about designations, those are only NAR, National Association of Realtor. Nobody else can use the word designation for anything they're doing. Everything else is called certification and anybody can certify a class or say the class is certified. So just realize that if it says designation, it is a exclusive license by NAR uh, class and that you definitely are going to have it. Ooh, am I a CRS designation? Yeah, I think I am. So I'll put that in there. <laughs> Anyways, so um, the link down here will throw in. This is a good site just to be able to see them all, to be able to go and see what else is in there. One of the things that I was curious about is if you could put in the chat, what designations do you have currently? So just type in a designations that you have. If you know, great. Uh, put in there what certifications do you already have? And it'd be interesting to see where we're at in the process. So uh, let's see what, what we're seeing here. So we got SERs and, oh, Tasha. Yeah, but we're kind of a little over all over the board. Yeah, Tasha's got uh, the uh, product. Yay. Uh, just starting out. And anybody else have any? So these are the ones that I have at this point. So, and we're going to talk about the alphabet soup, as Roger called it, 
of what it stands for, what might be important and what might not be important. So you'll see that I have CRS, GRI, blah, blah, blah. My certifications are there. The first one is a probate. Um, and then we'll talk about the rest of them also. I also took the ABR, which is the buyer's representation and the CIPS training just for knowledge, but I didn't wanna pay for it annually. And we'll talk about why you may wanna do that and may not wanna pay the annual fee, but that's the ones that I've taken. So technically I think I have five designations and what is that? five certifications that are pretty much NAR certified. So what is the difference between a designation and a certification? Like I said, designations are strictly for realtors, strictly NAR. They always come with an annual due. So that's something to think about because if you take the class and you pay the first year and you don't pay the second year, do not advertise that you have that designation anymore because they will come get you. That is an ethics violation. <laughs> so uh, be aware of that. Um, designations are extensive benefits that um, give you a lot of knowledge. Most of them are more than one day class and some of them actually require continuing ed. On the certifications, any class can be certified by anybody. And that's the danger of certifications. So the ones that's on NAR website that I gave you, you know those are certified by the National Association of Realtors. Other certified classes may not do you any benefit except to give you knowledge. So you just kind of have to watch and see who's hosting it and what are you gonna get out of it for what price. And Matt, Matt Jerome had asked a question about the GRI certification. And do you know if it requires annual dues? We're going to talk about it. So um, we're going to go through all that. So the certifications through NAR, they do not have annual dues. So that's a big plus. So the cost for a certification through NAR is gonna be the cost to take the class, but no annual dues. So to me, that's huge. And the way I look at it is you really need to think about how much am I willing to spend every year for designations and which ones are the most important and why for my business versus your business versus Heather's business. And everybody's just gonna have something different. There are lots of them and not everybody needs them. And that's why you have to think about it. If you wanna work with buyers, the ABR that's listed here is extremely important. I took it years ago, um, didn't bother to send in. I think at that point you had to have three transactions. I never got around to send it in, well, it expired. I took it again, did the same thing. So it's the thing I just never felt it was that important for me because the buyers were not my cup of tea overall. The first one is the seniors residential specialist. If you want to work the 55 community, you need to take that one because it definitely will teach you, number one, what do seniors expect out of a realtor? How do they think real estate is sold right now? Some of these folks have never sold a house for 30, 40 years, bought a house for 30, 40 years, 30 to 40 years. So they have no clue how mortgages work, how title works, why everything's required, why the contract is 15 pages long. So it helps you to understand how to explain things to the 55 plus community. The GRI that was mentioned, there's actually no annual fee. As you'll see in the left corner of my slides here, GRI is absolutely no fee. Has it ever got me any business? Not that I know of. Um, the thing I tell you about all classes, it's about knowledge. And if nothing else, you get knowledge. 
And I will tell you, GRI was extremely helpful as far as knowledge. They have a portion of their, what they call 103 series. Um, and you have to take 101, 102, and 103 series. Um, 103, if you want to work with investors, they probably have the best class within that series to teach you how to work with investors. So I love the classes, but it doesn't get me that many referrals or any that I know of. The next one down is if you're going to do nothing else and you have the credential to do this, you need to get your CRS. I will tell you this year, last year, and the years before, 25% of my business comes from CRS referrals. And that is the highest designation that is awarded to any agents, managers, or brokers. So very few people in the United States take the effort to get this designation, and we're gonna show what it takes to get it. Um, but it's a thing that I will absolutely beat anybody on that. So let me know if uh, you're having any trouble hearing me. My internet just popped in, said unstable. So who knows? So the next one is CRB. If you're a broker and you're actually managing people, um, broker for the state, whatever, you could take CRB. I've never taken it. I have my broker's license, but I don't feel a need to manage people, so I don't have it. Some people have both CRS and CRB. Both of them get you a lot of referrals. So, And then the SRE, uh, SRS is a senior res, uh, representation specialist, and that's how to work with this, and I said senior seller, representation specialist. That's how to work with sellers in today's world. Once again, people have not sold houses for a long time. They might not know anything about the crash in 2008 to 10, what happened with mortgages and why things don't operate the same way. All those things come into play on the SRS. Donald and I both took that class last year when COVID started because one of our boards locally actually hosted a bunch of classes and it was a very good class. So um, some more of the designations is CIPS. CIPS, when I first started real estate, cost you about $5,000 to get. Now they're pretty much giving it away. I took the classes but at $220 a year, I don't work international here. If I was still in Orlando, I would have gotten the designation and went ahead and paid the referral because, or the annual fee, because they do have a lot of referrals going back and forth if you're in a place where you get a lot of international traffic. Um, green designation, if you're selling homes that have solar or any of the other green building features. Uh, that's a designation that helps you understand all that. Uh, we only have one community near us, so I've never done it. Performance management, I didn't even know this one existed, so I may look into it just to see. It's $50 a year. Um, it, negotiation strategies, networking, referrals, blah, blah, blah there. So that's one that I'm gonna look into because I never heard of it. And then if you're into selling land, they have a land designation. And that is huge for annual fee, $445. I don't know what that buys you, but it better buy you something for $445. And then if you do commercial property management or appraisals, uh, appraiser, designations are available and those are some that I've listed here. So when we look at it with the SRES, what do you gain? Well, number one, you get access to the member database. So Donald and I can turn around and 
call people throughout the United States and say, hey, you ever heard of the villages? Refer to us. And I do that, and I do that through the CRS also. Uh, but you get access to the website, consumer marketing materials. You get a nice little newsletter that comes out every quarter. It is mailed to you, plus you can use it in any kind of publishing you want to do. Um, scripts, marketing letters, et cetera. It's great information for the, they call it 50 plus community. Uh, as we know in our community, it's 55 plus. So how do you get it? You complete a two day designation class. You have to pass an exam. The one thing I didn't mention, some of these designation classes may get you some continuing ed depending on your state. It is state by state, so we won't talk about that. But when you sign up for it, they'll ask if you want the continuing ed. And SRES is one that for Florida, you could get continuing ed. Don't know about other states. Um, but all these designations, you have to be with NAR, meaning National Association of Realtor, and or a cooperating association and you have to be in good standing, which means that you paid the money. And the online version costs you $295 at the moment. And then it's uh, first year is free because the 99 is included. And then it's $99 every year after that. Have I ever received a referral from SRES? Not that I know of. Now, the thing I tell you is when you're doing a listing presentation, and you walk in with the alphabet soup and show them what each one means and what it kind of, you know, actually took to get it. And the next person walks in and doesn't mention it, you've already got a leg up. And that's what I do mine for because I want to outdo my competitors here. CRS I've had since 2004. I was working on it in 2001 when 9-11 happened. I happened to be sitting right next door to McDill Air Force Base and heard the fighter jets go out because Bush happened to be in the same town that day. So uh, I have uh, very strong memories of that class. Um, CRS takes a while to get. So you have two different paths. The 60-30-30 is what most people need to focus on and do. In the old days, you had to save a copy of the closing statement or the HUD and fax it in today's world, email it. But in today's world now, we can actually produce out of our MLS, and I'm sure most people can too, a thing to prove. Okay, here's the last five years of volume and here's what I've done. So it's either 60 transactions or 30 million in volume. That used to be 75 transactions and 50 million in volume. So they have watered it down a little bit. Um, and you need to do 30 hours of education from the CRS uh, live e-learning or Celebration is their annual conference that they do. I actually went to it in Orlando in 2020, right before COVID hit. A real good way to meet people. So that's one way to get your designation in CRS. The other way is if you've been in the business for a while, 10 plus years, and you got 150 transactions, over, I think it's your life and 16 credits of education. And then there's an average of 1 million per year with at least 40 transactions. Don't understand that whole concept. They used to have a third option that if you had a bachelor's degree, you took some credit off of your education. And if you had a master's, it took some credit off. I didn't see that they have that option anymore. These are the two options. Anybody have any questions on CRS? Open your mic if you do. CRS is unfortunately a dying designation. 
I want to encourage you to get it. The reason I say it's dying because most of the people that have it are going to have been in the business for a long time. And because of the amount of time it takes to get this education, 30 hours is nothing. As we all know, you can get 30 hours knocked out in a heartbeat, but the 60 transactions consistent in that five years uh, can be hard for some folks starting out. So don't start the education until you have your business going pretty well. Is there is a timeline for how long you can use that education. Can you hear me? Yep. Go for it, yeah, Matt. I'm just, I'm just tired of paying for marketing, basically. Um, but I, I obviously I'm all for education. So I'm just I'm looking at what what I can do to improve myself um, with the limited amount of resources that I need to spend, basically. So this is one hundred ninety five dollars a year. What market are you in? I'm in I'm in Minneapolis. I'd, I'd like to move out of here fairly soon, but um, I'm kind of great place to do CRS um, because everybody from Minneapolis is going someplace. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so you want to refer it to another CRS agent and in turn, you'll get money. They'll be very happy wherever the folks are going, if that's Arizona or Florida or any of the other number of places they go. Minneapolis is actually one of my places I get a lot of referrals from um, because everybody does hightail it out during the winter time as they age. So, uh, but they have great marketing within CRS and there's a lot of things that you can pick up, a lot of newsletters, et cetera, in there. I highly recommend if you can meet to either one of these criteria right now, or you're close to it, you need to jump on it. It's good, the best. Good to know. Connection. Good to know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, CRS, there's no exam for the designation, but there are exams for individual classes. You have to be in the NAR. Uh, the application's $99. The dues are $195. And then they just implemented two whopping hours of continuing ed every calendar year. So I don't know who decided we needed to, but uh, I think we could do more than that. But anyways, right now it's two continuing, two hours of continuation. So that that's the highlight of designations. Any questions on the designations before we go to the certifications? It looks like Martha uh, is saying that we, we missed one designation, which is the Certified Accessibility Real Estate Specialist, CARES. I think this is new. Uh, PRO has just announced the class, and I'm going to be taking it. Um, so who is PRO? Oh, Pinellas Realtor Organization. Okay. Yeah, it's probably it's a certification. Yeah, it because, is. Okay, we haven't hit the certifications. We're talking designations. Yeah, that's why I didn't say anything yet. Okay, good, yeah. Any questions on the designations? So there's lots to choose from. Like I said, you have to be the one to know what fits your needs. If you never work international, don't take international because they're going to tell you how to shake hands with somebody how to greet somebody, how to present your business card, et cetera. No need to take it if you're not working a strong international. Uh, but, you know, the first ones I would say, I always call GRI like an associate's degree and CRS a bachelor's degree because the amount of time that it takes, that's what it is. And the rest of them are maybe two or three days, et cetera. Now that we have everything online, it's easy to knock them out. Um, a lot of times I suggest if you can get it in person, it's good because you can network with other people. So your revenue share can be helped, but you also get to hear other people's questions and understand, oh, I never thought about that type routine. So, 
Any now, other? Are there, <clears throat> are there any prerequisites for the GRI? No. No. So in Florida, <laughs> we have uh, the post 45 hours when you get your regular sales associate license, you have to do 45 hour post license. Well, I always tell people here to do GRI because post 45 is included in that GRI series. And so you can knock out two birds with one stone with it. Every state's different as far as the continuing ed that counts. So you have to check your own. But GRI is normally, um, it's pretty expensive, I understand, for the boards to host it. I don't know why. It's nine days generally. So it's three days, three days, and three days. It's 101, 102, 103. So um, if I was doing it today, you know, I did it in person for everything, but it's a thing I'd probably not get out to be a online. So CRS, I still go to classes throughout the United States just to meet people. I love it to, when they are live, that way you can actually, come on internet, uh, that way you can meet people and build your revenue share. Any other class uh, questions on desig uh, designations? Debbie? Yeah. Um, I'm going to put in my two cents about the CIPS. Okay. Florida is the number one state for international buyers and sellers or has been in the past. Yep. And so you're very likely to run in from so to someone from another country, particularly in the Orlando area and as we're all over on the beaches. The CIPS is one of the highest rated designations at NAR and internationally as well. And they have a fantastic referral program. Um, and it, it helps you because when you're meeting someone from another culture, if you do something inadvertently, which to you is normal, to them, it could be very offensive. And uh, so it's a little bit more about how to than how to shake hands. Uh, I yeah, yeah. Um, I will tell you the very first CIPS class I took in person. I went to Osceola County Board and took it. And the guy that was teaching it, which I couldn't tell you who it was, he had what I call war stories of everything. Well, the party forgot to tell us there was a test at the end of the time period and there was a book that we made it a fourth of the way through and I will tell you that the majority of people failed that class because he didn't spend the time teaching he spent the time war stories and I come, come take it at pro or Sarasota well, or any place over yeah here. I actually finished it online and I enjoyed it a lot and I actually took that class over after I complained because I was just totally shocked that he didn't take the time to teach so Most of the instructors are good but and you know this was somebody that everybody respected but I had no respect at the end of the class and you get good ones and you get bad ones and don't be afraid to tell NAR um, because they allowed me to take that class over. I passed the test, but I didn't feel like I learned anything. Um, but it was it is a hard process. And there's a lot of classes to CIPS also. So we're going to move ahead here. Um, so on the certifications, there's lots of them. So the first one is the only one I put on here that is non-NAR training. Like I said, anybody could come up with the certification. So be aware and be conscious of how much are they charging and what are you getting in return. The first one is the one that is certified probate real estate specialist. I put the website there, Heather or Donald will put that in there. If you're thinking anything about probate and learning that, and I hate the word probate 
but there's really no good word. But if you want to help families that need to sell their mom's house or their dad's house, or mom needs to go to the nursing home, you need to take this class because it tells you and helps you understand what is the process if it does go through probate and what is the process to help families with all the emotional side of the world. And it's a great class. I don't remember how many hours it is. The good news about it now that I'm done with it, they actually provide leads free of charge for 90 days. One of our agents locally has taken it recently. Uh, he's in Tampa and he's getting lots of leads off of it and working that angle of it. So they are given leads and then the leads are available after 90 days for a purchase. So it just uh, is one of the ways that you can get started on probate. Uh, if you want to do probate, you need to take this class. It's the best one out there. So that was kind of expensive, wasn't it? It's, um, I think it's like $300, uh, but they, it is so well worth it. I thought they quoted more than that to me because uh, at MTI, I was talking to them. I've got their email, so I'll check back into it. I thought it was more than that. Yeah, and I think they might have different options to include other uh -huh. things. Now, they have a, a database where you can be listed as a probate specialist. It's like 30 bucks a month. I've been paying that every year because I have had some leads off of it. Um, so I feel like $300, $400 a month or a year is worth it. Uh, but that may be included in the costs they're including. I haven't, I haven't looked into it to see what the actual cost is. Every one of these classes are a different cost. And this one, I gave you the website, the rest of them are on NAR. And that uh, email that I, or that uh, website that I gave at the very beginning. So if you're in a military city or you have a lot of military nearby you, absolutely take the MRP, Military Relocation Professional. Number one, you learn a whole lot about what do they go through during the process of getting shipped out to wherever um, how to use VA loans, et cetera. You absolutely have a great referral network behind that. Um, I have it. I did it because a lot of our seniors are military, retired, or they have active sons and daughters in the military. So it's a great way to understand the whole military side even if you were in the military, I'll guarantee you, you'll learn stuff off of the MRP. Another one that I don't know if you're interested, but short sales and foreclosures are coming up. Um, I don't have any interest in listing them and I'll tell you why in a little while, but it's good to understand why do the banks make you jump through all these hoops of what is the process for them to be able to sell the houses along the way. So it helps you understand that whole process. And so if nothing else, you need to take it just to learn because short sales and foreclosures are coming. We were talking about the Zillow um, article that came out today that said, Zillow has purchased a lot of homes that are now, because the market is changing and they own homes. Well, what are they going to do? <laughs> they own them, so <laughs> they're not going to let themselves uh, be short sale or foreclosed out of those homes. But you know, they're going to take a hit. But you need to understand what's going on with your market, which will include short sales and foreclosures. Another one that is—it's um, a pretty difficult class, but it's very useful—is the real estate negotiation expert. Uh, I don't know if they're doing this online last year. They were still doing it in person only because there's a whole lot of role playing and understanding how to negotiate. And, it oops, who was that? I, I took it online. Okay, you took it online, Amy? Good. Um, 
So it's a thing that online, you may not get the full gist of what it is, but you know, it's a thing, I think it's a great class uh, to understand how to negotiate. In today's world, we say we're not negotiating anyways, but there are negotiations because you're negotiating the time, the mortgage, the cash, the number of days to inspect, et cetera. There's tricks of how to do all the little terms that go into a contract. So those are negotiations. So pricing strategy advisor is another one for how to list a house. Working with the appraisers, understanding what appraisers look at and why that, you know, the market might say it's worth 400 and the appraiser says it's worth 380. And understanding what goes into the whole pricing strategy and to help your sellers understand that, that everybody thinks they have a mansion and they may just have a castle. Uh, so, you know, it's the thing that's a good one to take. If you're into the luxury homes, luxury homes means whatever luxury is in your market. Luxury in mine is probably a million dollars. Uh, but every market, if you're in California, a million dollars is kind of a starting point. So it may be a higher point. So, but it's how do you have to market luxury homes different? How do you negotiate different? How do you stand out from the crowd? And there are some pretty good referral um, sources behind the luxury home certification, the way I understand. The next two is pretty much for you to be able to be better at computer skills in today's world. So ePro helps you to understand how to use anything related to digital marketing. And that class evolves every day, it changes. And so I've taken it twice. And last year was one I took. Now I have a bachelor's degree in computer science, so that helps me understand a lot, but it doesn't help me understand what's happening in 2021 because things are radically changing. So ePro is good and it's strictly for the knowledge. I don't think there's any chance of referrals out of that one. And the next one is the digital marketing, social media. That is a pretty new one that's on NAR. And to me, it looks like uh, part two to EPRO when I looked at it. So, <clears throat> so looking into those two, if you're not comfortable with how to do marketing on the computer side of things, those two classes would be a good one. This one, I had no idea existed either, inside sales agent certification. It was kind of interesting to turn clients and existing customers into repeat business. I need that. <laughs> so guess what? I'm checking into it, probably jump on it because the thing I do the worst is keep in touch with my previous customers. And that's just because you get busy and you're on to the next one and you forget to stay in touch or at least I do, so. Resort and second homes. So, you know, I don't know, Tahoe, the villages, we're all considered kind of a resort second home type. If you're in any of those communities where you're actually selling to people that this is a second home for them, you want to learn about this class and take it. They teach you some tricks on taxes. They talk about how to close your house up at the end of season, et cetera. So it's a pretty good class for that. All the certifications, I don't know that I have received any referrals out of, but it's the thing that it's all about knowledge. So <clears throat> the next one is at home with diversity. Um, we all need to take this class. It teaches you how to be sensitive to all race, all anything um, that exists in this world. 
Uh, with the climate that we're living in today, people are hypersensitive to everything. And like we were talking on CIPS, you may not know that handing your business card one way is offensive. Well, at Home with Diversity teaches you things that may be considered offensive and how to work around and how to pretty much be sensitive to all your customers out there. So <clears throat> if you're part of a team, if you want to be part of a team, they have a certified real estate team specialist certification, and it goes pretty deep. It looked very interesting. I think it'd be a great class to take. And I think it'd be good even if you're not part of a team just to learn some of the techniques of organization. Um, I thought their tools and strategies looked pretty interesting that they're doing in that class. So any of these that you could take, remember there's no annual fees. So all you gotta do is pay for the class and everyone varies. So um, if you wanna work with investors, Here's one for real estate investing. I told you GRI, the 103 series has a good class. Here's one that is a certification of working with investors and even how to become an investor yourself. So that's a good one. And then the final one that they put in recently is with all the smart homes, meaning ring doorbells, nest, thermostats, et cetera, et cetera, that you have out there. How do you as a realtor have to protect your listing? How do you have to disclose, et cetera, to buyers that's walking into smart homes? How do you even present it on listings? So it's a way to learn about the technology, learn about how the privacy happens because in the state of Florida, we have to reveal if there's auto, audio or video um, happening during any showings because your buyers want to know that. That way they know not to say anything in that house, but that's a requirement in the state of Florida. And there's tons of other certifications out there. But once again, these are the ones that are NAR, except the first one I gave you. Um, anything else, you have to be cautious about who is presenting it and what are you getting out of it? Because anybody can make a certified class and you can say you're certified and it's really doesn't mean anything. There used to be a staging certification and I didn't even find that one anymore. And so I don't know if NAR got rid of it or if they've you know, put it over to someplace else at this point. So, so in EXP, <clears throat> there's two useful trainings that to me is like having a designation or a certification because you are on the list with EXP that you have done this training. One of them is RELO, which is relocation services. So if you have people being transferred in or out, via an employer, via a company, even via the military, you want to look and find out when the next reload class is being held. And this is all at EXP and it's all free of charge. And Dawn that I have in yellow here is the one that you could workplace chat to find out when that class is happening. So I did that one. It's a very good class. I have had one opportunity. I didn't get the deal because it was outside the villages and I don't know as much about outside the villages. I didn't get that opportunity to fly. The next one that EXP has is REO certification. How to work with bank owned foreclosed properties. I said, I'm not interested in doing it. Once you take this certification, you'll know why I'm not interested. Maybe you would be, but it's a lot of what I call high level, high stress, very emotional and high dollar out the door before you get a reward by getting paid. Because the banks have to do a lot of legwork up front and you get to do that legwork for them in most cases. 
and then hopefully you get the listing and along the way, hopefully you get paid. Um, so EXP is making it a whole lot easier to work REO. So if you do have some interest, take the class and see if you're cut out for it. I would never be able to do it. I'm just not into that much stress. Um, so once you take the class, you'll understand. It is several weeks at EXP. They spread it out over several weeks. It's like three hours for both of these class for several weeks. Uh, so Dawn is the one that's in charge of it and it is free and it's in EXP world. So contact her to find out when the next one is, maybe after the first of the year at this point. And then we also have Rebecca and Michael Straley. Um, they are EXP Realty Realtors and they are our NAR connection. So what's that mean? Well, they have a direct link back to NAR so they know when new classes are coming. Um, they don't give any discounts, so it's not like we get a discount for being EXP, but they may have live or meaning live via Zoom or in person, meaning physically somewhere that NAR doesn't have listed for your area. And I put the link into the chat and hopefully I'm not watching the chat, so hopefully um, Heather Donald's doing it. These, um, they also have other training that is not NAR approved. So they have their own certifications and you just have to decide if it's something that you want. Any questions on any of the certifications or any of this? So before we move to that, for the last two things that Debbie was, uh, three things that Debbie was talking about, if you're not with EXP, feel free to check with your broker or your brokerage and uh, they may have courses like that as well with your brokerage. Correct. Any questions on the certifications or what it involves? Uh, this is a good um, little document here you put together. Is there any way we can get a copy of it? Yep, we will attach it to good. the That's video. That's a lot of work you did on that, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah, and Dan, brought up one that you didn't mention, and that was the express offers that they have in EXP also. Yes, express offers uh, is, I guess you're certified in express offers. So yes, that's an, another one that's good. Um, you know, express offers, I guess I forgot it because I'm not using it here. Um, I got certified at the very beginning just to know what it was about, um, but you know, express offers is like Zillow. They're they're backing away because they have a tendency to think the market's shifting, so they're not going to jump as quick as they used to. But yes, that's another I, one. I'm not familiar with express offers. Can you tell me more about it? So express offers is pretty much if you have a listing and. It, it, in my market, I would call it a dog, that it's not perfect, it's not up to date, it's not um, what somebody's going to jump on right away. It may be a house filled full of cigarette smoke, um, something that's going to take some work. To me, that's what they're looking for because they're investors. Express Offers is a group of investors that have decided to join the EXP Express Offers and said, if you get something in this area, and it could be a zip code, a city, a county, um, present it to us. And there's a process of how you present it to them and how you do it in the process of listing the house. Um, I know the Training has changed dramatically since I took it. So I'm not going to state how long it is or anything else because I really don't know. Uh, but it's a whole process. But they're looking for the deals. They're looking just like an investor. They're looking to see what margin they can make out of it. Uh, investors are good to work with because they know what they want, but they're bad because they want to know what they want. They're not going to divvy off of it um, or change your mind very easily. So, 
Yeah, they're also, they're also going to, you know, they're buy and you know buy and flips, or buy and hold and then rent. So they're th those investors. That's what they're looking at. They're either buying and flipping them, or they're buying them to rent them and hold it long term. But this is actually EXP's answer to I buyers. Correct. So they're not going to want to pay if I. If you think the house is worth four hundred thousand dollars on the open market when it's in good shape, they're not going to pay four hundred if it needs work. So they're going to pay like seventy to seventy-five percent of that value, and then fix it up and resell it, or fix it up and hold it for as a rental property for them. So basically, you're working with investors to help them find properties, and they have um, the in the in the um, website it has buy boxes, what they call them for each of the states and then inside the states, it has the counties that they buy in and you can take and submit your property. It doesn't have to be a listing that you have. It could be something that's not listed that you know about, right? And uh, some of them want non-listed properties. Some will do listed properties, but if it's listed, it needs to be your listing. You can't submit Donald's listing. Oh, darn. Yeah, <laughs> right. Debbie, I'd like to speak a little more about the certified accessibility real estate specialist, because I think it could be very helpful for this group. They go into the, the background and the laws and help you understand what's necessary. You also get four hours of CE. Well, that depends on your state. And that's in Florida. Yes. <laughs> so that may be a florida only but i don't know every state's going to have their own certified classes the the caution i have is there's what i call a lot of fast talkers um if it's through the board i believe it's legit if it's not through the board i tell you to be cautious and understand who it is and what you're getting before you pay any price and this is through um pinellas yeah, Pinellas Education right. is doing it. Uh, I would say it's a legit class and it's probably a new one and maybe Florida specific, but it's a thing. If it's held through NAR for your board. Um, and the cost is $25. Yeah, the cost is right. Um, so it's a thing that just, just take it with a grain of salt of what you do, what you don't do. Um, any other questions that we have in the chat or open your mics and ask anything? So if you were to get any other ones, would you do the ePro or the GRI? Which ones do you think of those are good? Well, if you're gonna pay annual fees and you're gonna work 55 plus, I would do- and I, Yeah, SRES, yes. I would do SRES, GRI, and uh, CRS. Okay. Those three body should get. If you're if you're not gonna work 55 a lot, don't do SRES right away, do one of the others, but um, work toward that CRS. I will tell you that's been my money maker. Uh, and in our my market here, I have 12 agents that are CRS. I will tell you that if you don't put on your profiles of any of these that you do, with a picture and some good information about what makes you different, you will not stand out. But the good news is the 12, only myself and one other lady actually tells anything about why they work in the villages. Everybody else just says, I've been in real estate 25 years or whatever the magic thing is. One of them says I moved to a 55 plus community and never mentions which one. And she actually works there. So, hey Debbie, would you would you repeat that? CRS, GRI, and what was the other one? SRES. Okay. Thank you. So, by the way, Match Room had um, messaged me quickly and asked what classes would be recommended to not only educate you but bring in referrals. It's a little bit overwhelming trying to figure out what makes the most sense financially. And by the way, Matt, you're not the only person that feels that way because I can think most of us on this chat box would think the same way. 
So MRP, if you are in a military type community or nearby one, absolutely, that's a great referral source. Um, we don't have anything here. Our closest is Tampa Jacksonville. So what we use it for is the fact that a lot of the seniors are retired military or they have active children or grandchildren. So it's an ability to talk to them about how the military works and if, how that whole process works. If they have active um, children or grandchildren in the military, do those seniors get breaks on stuff? Well, you got to remember there's always USAA behind the scenes on a military thought process because one of the things that I ran into is there's a company named Cardis that handles all USAA referrals. Well, Realty, which is the ERA brand, has all of the USAA referrals. And so I ran into a customer working through the whole process, got them under contract, and all of a sudden they said, oh, by the way, you're going to give me a rebate. And I'm stunned because I had no idea that USAA gave rebates back to people. So when you take the MRP, you learn about that kind of stuff um, that, yeah, it's legal in the state of Florida to give a rebate. So to be able to keep them, what was going to happen, USAA was going to give them to another agent. Well, I had them under contract, so that wasn't happening, but I did end up giving them a, a rebate. So just knowing those little things, but which, which so one do they use? Would you say Chorus? Would you say? No, Real G. R E A L O G Y, which is the the family name for ERA and Caldwell Banker NRTs, which Caldwell Banker NRT is the company version, not the franchise version. So they give all their leads through them. Cardis does. Well, the good news is Dawn came from a background of being in the relocation, and she's actually getting Cardis leads for areas that are not heavily covered. And so it's another good reason to take that relocation class to be able to fight for those leads that you might miss because they're going to through USAA to Cardis. So, but as far as referrals, I think MRP and CRS are the best referral sources uh, that if you work it, you can get leads. And if you put a great profile out, you get great leads. We're at the top of the hour. We are at the top of the hour. So I am gonna thank you for coming and giving us all of that information. And again, I want to um, thank everybody for joining us. We are the Seniors Network Group. Um, and I just want to go and introduce our board a little bit. We've got Donald Maycott, Debbie Gentry, who just gave our presentation. Myself, I'm Heather Brooks, and we have Laura. And Laura has a very special announcement for us. So Laura, pop on your mic and let us know what is coming up. You, Heather. So I have been working with Rebecca Straley and hopefully we'll be able to offer you the SRES training in 2022. We're looking at January and specifically it's a two-day training. So we're going to be looking at the 12th, which is a Wednesday and the 13th, which is a Thursday of January. So we'll be putting together a flyer soon to keep you informed and really excited to be able to offer that to you. Thank you, Heather. You're so welcome. Next week, we do not have class because there is a big convention going on at one of the brokerages. As you all know, we are, we are from all brokerages. We are not just EXP agents who are here. We are from everywhere. And so we are going to go ahead and sidebar next week's and we will return the very following week. We appreciate you guys joining us. And if there's any other questions or concerns, you can go ahead and email us. Or if there's anything that you guys want to see, we are happy to bring a class to you. Or if there's something that you would like to teach, 
please let us know. It's something we are definitely open to hearing about. Laura, thank you. Donald, Debbie, so I appreciate everything. We got poll results. Oh, well, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. How's our poll results? So the poll results are eight out of 21 people have their SRES. Okay. 13 do not. Okay. So, well, that's, that's a great, that's great because we just had that announcement. Thank you, Laura, for helping us get that. Like I said, if there's anybody else out there that would like to see other classes, we would love it. We do have other classes on our YouTube channel and in our Facebook group, workplace group, and other groups. Uh, we've done TikTok, Instagram, Canva, everything, you name it. Um, but we are always open to other classes. So join us, not next week, but the week after on Tuesday evening, 4 p.m. Pacific time and 7 p.m. East Coast time. And Thanks so much. You. Appreciate it. You're welcome. This recording will be online tomorrow. And yes, the word doc will be with the recording. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you. Bye.